This is Sean Plew from Hitterist.com. Today we're going to take a look at Aaron Judge, some of his swing mechanics, and the changes he's been able to make from last season to this season. This is following the Home Run Derby where he absolutely put on a show. A couple things I want to point out, and I'll do my best to describe what he was taught. I'm very fortunate to kind of get a behind-the-scenes look at the information he was taught. A lot of information that I've been familiar with for a very long time. And Judge has been able to implement it, implement it into his swing and really become a great hitter and hit for power and average. And I'll do my best to describe the changes that he made and kind of what he's trying to do with his swing. So one thing that he always did pretty well was this front foot hover where he doesn't stride out a long way. He kind of just picks the butt foot up, maybe strides a few inches and puts it back down. But now he gets this really nice feel where the back elbow is pulling back and he really coils. You can see the back hip kind of, being pushed back and this creates this feel where he he's not really out of control when he when he shifts his weight forward the weight stays on the back leg and he kind of balances over the back leg until he's ready to swing so that's one key component the next is what he's doing with his arms and his hands so he's really trying to twist the bat around his hands and swing vertically he was quoted as saying he tried to swing like a Ferris wheel rather than before he swing more like a merry-go-round. So a very vertical approach into the baseball. And what you'll see is his back shoulder really dig in there. I mean, he drops his back shoulder as far as humanly possible. But you can see already, without the hands coming forward, the barrel of the bat's blurred out, and he's creating a ton of bat speed by twisting the bat around his hands. One thing people don't talk about is matching plane from catcher to pitcher. You hear a lot of talk with Ted Williams and matching plane with the pitch from a horizontal standpoint. But vertically, if you were to take a look at how long someone can continue their swing, you can see how his swing continues out towards the pitcher. So his hands are at his shoulder for as long as possible, and then they continue out towards the pitcher rather than going left towards the dugout. And this is huge. A lot of people will agree with the term stay behind and through the baseball, but the path and the instruction to get there, a lot of people don't agree with. But he's clearly doing a great job of doing that. He does a great job creating torque between the upper and lower body. Really leaves his hands back, leaves the elbow back. And he's able to create contact way out front because, again, most people will roll over this ball and eventually turn left with their hands. But he's able to really swing out from his body, out towards the pitcher, and make square contact and really square the ball up better than most guys. Let's take a look at another view here. One thing I want you to notice is his posture, right? Nice bend at the waist. If you saw my video on good hitting positions. This is pretty much exactly where you'll see most guys at. Elbow up and back, bat vertical, nice bend at the waist and the front foot up. This is a really nice strong position to swing from. And I always look for the moment where the barrel gets up to speed. That's where the people are actually swinging from. So you'll see before he used to flatten the bat out and then swing sideways. And it was much less efficient. Uh, he was obviously a big, powerful guy, and he probably ran into some in batting practice. But when it came to the game and really being consistent and hitting for average, there were adjustments that need to be made. And he's done a really nice job implementing those adjustments. One thing I want to point out is how similar his swing has gotten to Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera is another guy that swings very vertical in his approach to the baseball. And again, this is 
comparing a batting practice swing to a game swing, but I want you to notice the positions here that they get to. Miguel Cabrera is a little bit more tipped forward, but you can see right in here, they get to a very similar position, similar posture, very similar feel going on in their swing. All right? And this is very much on purpose with Judge. He's trying to twist the bat around the hands, and he's trying to drop this back shoulder down in here behind the baseball. So again, very similar position. I want you to watch the way the path of the bat and the way the swing works. So here's Cabrera. What's the barrel really twist around the hands here as he keeps the hands back? And you'll see the same thing in Aaron Judge. Very similar bat path they're able to create. And I really like this position from Judge. He gets to this position really nicely in batting practice. Where he holds the barrel more vertical. Sometimes you'll see him in a game flatten out the barrel a little bit and swing from there. But this is a perfect example of what we want to be doing with our swing. And again, cutting the barrel, cutting the ball vertically with the swing and really barreling it up behind and through the baseball. Some other guys who swing very vertical like this are Mike Trout, Chris Bryant, really good hitters. So you can see his shoulders tilting again like a Ferris wheel behind the ball, through the baseball. And again, this is you know the information he was taught and the information he's having success with. Here's another clip in batting practice. Very similar position, very similar bat path. And he's putting a dent in stadiums. I mean, this is a look at him before he made his swing adjustments. And you'll see it's a very different swing. You see the position of the hands and the bat. So he raises his hands up above the back elbow and then his bat flattened out back behind his head and this is where he swung from right in this position here so it's a much different position much less leverage position and from here you pretty much have to swing around your body and I remember watching his swing and, and looking at all the potential in him because of the size and the strength and the bat speed he was able to produce but at the end of the day if you don't have efficient swing movements and a swing that can really stay behind the baseball, you're going to struggle. And that showed last season when he was called up and it showed in the minor leagues. He didn't do so well. But he did so well in spring training of this year, they had to give him a chance at the major league level, and he's taken advantage of that. But you can see how different the positions are. The entire engine, of the way his swing works, changed. The way he uses his hands and his upper body are completely backwards compared to what he used to do. I remember watching him, you know, push away from the back shoulder and his shoulders would be spinning sideways and the hands would be going sideways. A lot more like Giancarlo Stanton, who's another guy who's got this kind of potential but hasn't been able to hit over 300. We compare him to some other guys here. Joey Votto is another guy who stays inside the ball really well, swings through the ball vertically. And a lot of people will look at this and say that this is how you pop up, but you know, you don't hit 360 and have a ton of line drives and doubles by popping the ball up. These balls are squared up, and here's another guy, Manny Ramirez. And the idea here is to keep the hands up, to create, to create the tightest radius possible for the barrel to turn around the hands and line up the baseball. Another guy, Chris Bryant, who stays behind and through the ball really well. You see how his hands finish out towards the pitcher. He squares the baseball. Before I go, I want to give credit to everyone in this picture for the amazing job you guys did working with Aaron Judge in the offseason. You changed this young man's life and Got to give credit, all the credit in the world to you guys. 
If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. This has been Sean Plouffe. Visit the website at hitterish.com. Catch you next time. Darling, darling, you know that we are sold out. This is fading, but the band plays on now. We're crying, crying, so let the velvet roll down.